welcome everyone. Thank you to the partners that are, are uh, joining for this announcement. We will be hearing from each of them later uh, quickly to introduce them. We have David White, our city's planning director, Karen Paul, Ward 6 city councilor, and someone who's been involved in the City Place project uh, since its start. Um, uh, Tim Sampson, who has been the lead transactional attorney um, uh, as we have been working to uh, get to today, and um, Kelly Devine, the head of the Burlington Business Association, um, which uh, will speak to um, the significance uh, of today's announcement. Um, we are here to announce a uh, significant breakthrough with respect to the City Place project. This is a milestone we've been working towards for months since initiating legal action last September. This process has culminated with an agreement this week between me and BTC Mall Associates, the developer of the project, after multiple days of extensive negotiations over uh, months going back to the, the end of November. The result is this, a settlement agreement that we are announcing today. This settlement guarantees the reconnection of lost streets and allows the developer to advance a transformational project. There are a number of highlights to this agreement. Let me try to, to hit the major ones. One, this settlement will result, likely this spring, in the transfer of land for Pine and St. Paul Streets to the city at no cost to the taxpayers. The developer has an appraisal that values this land at $4.3 million. The developer will transfer this land to the city as soon as the settlement is completed, which is again anticipated to be in mid-May of 2021. This, let me just, as a quick aside here, we're gonna refer throughout this uh, event, we're gonna be referring, referring to this settlement agreement. Um, members of the media who covered the city during the years in which we were working to finish the settlement agreement re related to BT will kind of remember this structure. We are announcing a settlement today. It will need to go to the city council for approval. Um, once that has been approved, there is a very high likelihood that it will be completed, um, but it will take time and there are milestones along the way. And so that's when I, that's, that's what I'm referring to here. Um, a second major highlight too, the settlement creates additional security to ensure that the new streets will be built at no cost to taxpayers, regardless, and this is a key point, regardless of the progress on the development. The way that the settlement does this is through a guaranteed legally enforceable contract that would be paid for by the developers that will reconstruct the streets if the, develop the developers do not succeed in starting to build the project in a, within approximately two years. If they do succeed, then this project will unfold the way it was normally envisioned with the uh, streets being paid for, uh, being built initially by the developers and then reimbursed um, when conditions are met, when the streets are complete, and when um, there are private improvements in place that allow the um, city to safely take on debt, knowing that it has new revenues to pay for that debt, um, that structure, one of those two things will happen. Either, this, either the project will move forward as originally contemplated and the TIF district and the TIF process will pay for those streets and no cost to the taxpayers, or alternatively, if the project continues to struggle, um, we will have this legally enforceable guaranteed contract um, uh, that um, ensures that the project will be built at no cost to the, that the streets will be reconnected at no cost to the city. Third major provision of the settlement agreement, when the project moves forward, uh, the settlement requires the developer to repay um, $150,000 a year in lost property taxes to the city's tax increment financing district that have resulted from the project's unanticipated delays. Um, these payments have an estimated value of $300,000 to $450,000, depending on when the construction begins. Um, <clears throat> members of the media who have been following this project and who have been talking to me about this uh, know that I've often 
made the point in the past that these delays have not cost the city. Um, uh, the expenses of these delays have been paid for uh, by the development. Uh, the one exception, as I have pointed out in the past, that has been the, the, the TIF district has lost uh, revenue uh, during this period of un un unexpected delay. Um, when the project moves forward, that lost revenue will be repaid. Four, uh, the settlement agreement includes an amended and restated development agreement between the city and the developer, which retains the benefits of the original agreement, including all that all the risks of construction and development will remain the responsibility of the developer, and that the developer will remain committed to the numerous provisions um, within the agreement that benefit the community, such as the affordable housing requirements, the local employment opportunity uh, language, the um, requirements to make good faith on, on uh, good faith efforts to incorporate um, a heating system that uses renewable energy. In short, this settlement creates a way for the effort that the developers team put into reaching this agreement and I wish them well with their ambitious plan. Uh, they will, I expect that the <clears throat> developer will separately be sharing today um, updated information as to how they see their project moving forward from this point. Um, no matter what happens going forward, a point I just want to reinforce and make sure it's clear and I know it you know, there may well may take some questions to be uh, completely clear about this. No what, matter what happens now with the project that the developer is pursuing, the city will get our streets. Um, <clears throat> the developer's success ultimately will mean hundreds of new homes, jobs, and activity in the heart of our city, which in turn will be a success for all of Burlington. The, the administration will be making public later today, uh, maybe even before this press conference is over, the documents that make up this settlement agreement that are the result of this negotiation. We will be presenting on Monday at the city council meeting these documents and, and discussing with the city council how this settlement agreement will work. And then the following Monday, the 16th of February, we are seeking approval um, from the city council. We've discussed the terms of this settlement with the city council previously during two executive session meetings as it was being negotiated. So I am I'm hopeful of the council's approval. Uh, the settlement involves multiple detailed documents and, and all of those documents uh, will be made public um, in it in advance, again, we're gonna get them up as soon as possible and, and uh, certainly well in advance of Monday's meeting and, and uh, in advance of the vote the following Monday. <clears throat> and uh, again, to restate, if the council approves the settlement, the agreement outlines a series of milestones for how this will unfold in the months and even years ahead. And in a, in a minute, we will, I'm gonna hand this over to Tim Sampson who will speak in some detail to how that process will work. Uh, before doing that, I just want to go back to the big picture of what we're trying to do here, which I think at times has um, <clears throat> been hard to hold on to. People I know refer to uh, the site today as, as, a, as a hole or, or the pit. The reality is we have had a hole in the heart of our downtown since the 1960s when a neighborhood was torn down and replaced with what is really a, a suburban mall building that was declining badly in the years leading up to 2017 when we embarked upon this effort. Today's announcement means that we know that that historic mistake will be fixed. The streets will be reconnected. The public infrastructure will be there for a vibrant downtown neighborhood with homes and jobs and retail to once again flourish in this part of the city. To, to bring that to life a little further and remind us of um, what we are working towards here and why this is such an important project for the future of Burlington's downtown. I'm now gonna introduce uh, and hand over the microphone to David White, 
the city's director of planning, who will um, uh, just talk again about how this has been a, a long-standing city goal and what what today's the significance of today's uh, announcement is. David, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is truly fantastic news, and I congratulate and, and thank the mayor for his leadership in finding a path forward for this important downtown redevelopment project. Um, as he noted, um, a particular note in this agreement is the assurance that these new downtown street connections of Pine and St. Paul will be completed. Um, the downtown has suffered from the loss of these street connections since urban renewal in the 1970s. And restoration of the street grid through the heart of our downtown has been a long held dream um, of the city for decades. <clears throat> we advanced this vision formally in the Plan BTV Downtown Waterfront Master Plan that was unanimously adopted by the City Council in 2013. This, in this plan, we encourage the transformation of this two level suburban shopping mall into a vibrant mixed use multi story development, enhancing the city's tax base creating new housing, including much needed affordable housing under our inclusionary requirements, creating new jobs and adding new vibrancy and energy to our downtown. <clears throat> A key part of this redevelopment vision was the restoration of the street grid at Pine and St. Paul Street. A street grid network significantly improves the traffic flow by giving travelers more routing options between where they are and where they want to go. And as a result, don't place all of the traffic burden on just one or two streets. Restoration of Pine Street in particular will restore a complete north-south connection between Pearl and Main Streets, relieving pressure on South Winooski and Battery. Just as importantly, these new street segments will double the opportunities for street level activation with new shops and restaurants halfway between the marketplace and the lake. And our office looks forward to this transformational redevelopment project moving forward in seeing the city's vision for the heart of our downtown finally come to fruition. Thank you. Thanks very much, David. And now let's please go to uh, Kelly Devine, the Executive Director of the Burlington Business Association. Thank you, Olivia, um, and thank you, Mayor. Am I good to go? Okay, yes. the, Burlington the Burlington Business Association welcomes this news that Mayor Weinberger and the City Place developers have reached an agreement. The project, again, has a path forward. Almost a year into the pandemic, there's light on the horizon for both this project and Burlington. The BBA has been supporting this project from the start that hasn't changed. We know Burlington needs housing. We need more people living downtown and we need those streets reconnected. As David highlighted, the former mall served us well for decades. And this new vision began with Plan BTV just about a decade ago. It's been a long road for our community Let's move forward. Surely our community supports the construction of over 400 housing units, more than 80 affordable units, a new street grid, rooftop views of the lake open to the public, $4 million plus dollars of new streets built at no cost to taxpayers. The local City Place Development Team's new plan includes what so many in our community agree is a priority, and it includes housing more housing, less height. More housing and people in our downtown will help Burlington thrive. We're gonna reclaim the street grid, add bike and vehicle par parking, more community space, commercial space. It's an LED gold certified building. It includes a promise to minimize fossil fuel use, use local labor. All of these features of this agreement came out of this extensive negotiation. And it's great for Burlington. We need it, we need it now. We need it to give hope to our downtown businesses and their employees who've been hit so hard by this pandemic. This project will help propel Burlington towards recovery. From the start of the construction to the completion of the project, there'll be more activity downtown. And that's really great in the face of what's been a really tough year. I can't say enough to thank the mayor and the city place developers for all their hard work and their perseverance. 
thank you for putting Burlington first. Who do we have next, Olivia? Uh, we're gonna go to Karen. Yes, uh, Councillor Paul, please go ahead. Okay, am I, am I good? Yes. All right. Okay, great. Um, so uh, as the mayor noted, um, I have been uh, on the city council since this project, uh, since the beginning. And uh, certainly as we all know, um, it's been a long journey to get us to this important day. Um, it's with renewed confidence that I believe we have arrived at a place um, where today we can begin anew with real and certain optimism that this start will end with an amazing project that will fulfill many of our broad community's needs. Um, and others have spoken to this as well, Kelly and the mayor, in particular, the now certainty of the reconnected Pine and St. Paul streets, along with hundreds of units of downtown housing, much needed affordable housing and a retail base that can thrive. Um, and all with a, with a vision that includes um, less height, which I think was something that, uh, uh, that all of us wanted. Um, I'm deeply appreciative as, our, as, a, as everyone else is um, of the vision of the local partners, Dave Farrington, Al Senecal and Scott Ireland in partnering with Devonwood and equally to Don Sinek's for understanding that in Burlington, we take a great deal of pride in local enterprise. The inclusion of the local partners, um, Dave, Al and Scott is key. They're here, they're down the street, they live among us with their families, their businesses, their deep and well-earned and deserved reputations for getting the job done. Together, these partners with the strong support of our community eager to see this development happen, I believe that we will bring this project to reality, one that will serve to enrich and invigorate our downtown, meeting our city's needs and vision as one of the greatest small cities in America for generations to come. I look at this settlement through the eyes of an accountant um, with also decades of uh, financial experience, um, as well as that of a city council councilor focused on our community's well-being and our fiscal stability. The settlement, this settlement that we have with have before us today, was no small task, and there was an awful lot of work that went on behind the scenes, uh, forged by the mayor, who personally spent a great deal of time in these negotiations insisting on the best possible settlement to insulate the taxpayer and to benefit the city. And with the full support of the city council, our legal team and the developers of this project, this settlement is a win for the city and it's a win for the taxpayers. As the mayor noted, the settlement includes the land transfer, the guaranteed contract to reconnect the streets at no cost, to the taxpayers, the repayment of lost property taxes. These are all aspects of the settlement that we can all enthusiastically uh, support and endorse. Um, my congratulations to all the people who worked on this effort and to the citizens of Burlington who are seeing the vision of the community-based Plan BTV coming to reality. I look forward to working with my colleagues on the council to pass this development agreement. Um, yes, to uh, pass this settlement. Uh, we haven't done this development agreement yet. Um, the administration and the developers collaboratively and to seeing that this project will come to fruition. Uh, thanks for giving me that time to speak. Thank you, Councilor Paul. Um, and I think that's a good segue to our last uh, speaker and then we'll take questions. Um, Tim will walk through how the kind of mechanics of what's going to happen here. We are amending and restating this development agreement. Um, that is the heart of, of this settlement. Um, and uh, there's a lot of details. The reason it's taken us 
some months to get here is there are a lot of details details to be to be sorted out. So um, why don't you try to hit the most important ones, Tim? Tim. All right, we're not hearing you, Tim. We're hearing, or at least maybe we are, but I'm hearing it in a very bizarre way. Um, can you try again? Turn your mic off and turn it back on, maybe. I'm not hearing. Um, why don't you, how about Tim, this, Tim? If you, if you leave the Zoom and rejoin, I can, uh, OK, Tim is trying that. Good. <clears throat> Let's give this the one joys moment of, of the trouble Zoom era. <laughs> okay. I see Tim is back. Let's try this again. Try it again. How's this? That time I worked. Excellent. Go the, ahead. The challenges of our times, right? This is what we do. Um, so thank you. Apologies for the interruption. Um, high level, what this structure is, is an amended amendment and restatement of the development agreement that was uh, entered into in the fall of 2017. Um, that gets, uh, if that gets approved by the city council, if the package gets approved, the document gets signed uh, along with a bunch of other uh, related documents for the transaction, but they all go into escrow for a period. Uh, I think similar to other transactions, the city has engaged in before in many, um, uh, many other transactions for sure. And so during that period that of, of escrow, if you will, there are a number of things that are gonna happen. Um, title issues will be dealt with with respect to the street parcels that the city will um, be transferred. Uh, there's an environmental assessment to, to deal with. And some of the plans for the uh, design of the streets will be progressed during that period of time. So when those more mechanical pieces are in place, uh, and again, we hope that that's around the middle of May, uh, the documents will be released from escrow and become finally effective. So that's the next critical milestone. During that time, of course, uh, the developer will be uh, engaging with the city with, through the DRB process, the other regulatory processes uh, on its uh, amended uh, project. And, and that will advance uh, on a parallel track. And uh, going forward from the May timeframe, uh, the city and the developer will continue to work closely together uh, under uh, the uh, guidance of the documents to further refine and, and get to final uh, construction documents for this, the streets to be built as part of the construction project. Ultimately, that is the goal, right? We've talked a lot about what happens if the streets uh, don't get built as, the, as part of the construction project. The goal is that they are, um, and, and um, the backstop is uh, the, the mechanisms that the mayor has described in detail if, if they don't. Uh, so during the, the ensuing year, say the project then proceeds along that course and, and it gathers uh, information about what it's going to uh, include in its first phase of construction. Uh, and, and the intention is that it includes a lot in its first phase of construction and that will enable uh, the issuance of, of uh, TIF debt according to the structure of the development agreement, much like uh, the prior version they would occur uh, no later than June of 2022. So between this period, of time, between escrow release, there's about a year point in time before uh, the, the project would be furthered enough to issue that debt. Um, if the project meets all the milestones it needs to uh, meet the debt uh, issuance deadline, the debt would be issued and the, and the project would proceed. Uh, it's important to note during that, and, and as, as the mayor has emphasized, a lot of time and attention spent to uh, protecting uh, the tax, taxpayer from risk in this, in this deal. Uh, TIF debt would not be issued for this project without the developer entering into um, a very clear and, and binding obligations to pay the uh, borrowing costs of the city during the time that that TIF debt was, was out. So 
high level, again, that's, that's where the structure takes off from here. If construction starts then by those uh, milestones uh, in about a year you know, from this spring, um, then you know, there are milestones yet for the delivery of, of the streets according to the construction schedule. Um, with outside dates, you know, in a year to 18 months, two years after that, depending on how the phasing of the project goes. So hopefully that's enough of an overview, Mayor. Happy to fill in some more gaps. Obviously, I could talk a long time, um, but or, or go to questions, whatever you think. Great. Thank you for that, Tim. Um, Olivia, why don't we take some questions? Great. Uh, we do have a number of questions in the queue and reminder for members of the media, if you would like to ask a question, please get into the queue by emailing me. The first question is from Courtney at seven days. Hang on, Courtney, while I locate you. Uh, Courtney, on this, because of the version of Zoom you're using, I have to make you a panelist. So that might turn on your camera as well. Let's try that. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm, you might have already said this, I just wanna make sure I didn't miss it. Uh, Mayor, could you just um, explain how much TIF revenue this is expecting this project to generate? Um, obviously it being scaled back, I think that's been an open question. Yep. I don't know if there's any more clarity on that. Um, we can, yeah, yes, uh, Courtney, project. We're, we're currently projecting that um, as we understand the proposed project now, which is going through uh, permitting and if it, it is built on the phasing schedule that the developer has talked about, that there will be approximately eight to $10 million of um, TIF investment that is, that is ultimately made. Um, so given that to you as a range, uh, there are things that could cause it to fall outside of that range. Um, uh, but that's, you know, certainly if, if the developer were, you know, to accelerate the project and build it all at once, there might be a modest increase um, in, in that range. Um, if there uh, are further delays, uh, uh, you could see it fall, fall short of that, delay, that, that range. There is some uncertainty in that and there, there will be until later stages um, of this. Um, that's why part of why we're emphasizing with this announcement that regardless of that, uh, and regardless of where that ultimately lands, um, we, we know that the, the streets will be uh, reconnected um, one way or the other, even if uh, the TIF uh, project continues to face challenges. Okay, great. And then how much of the TIF revenue, how much will it cost to, to reconnect St. Paul and Pine? Like how much of the TIF revenues would go toward that cost? So one thing you'll see in the um, in this development agreement when you get into the details of it is there is um, a waterfall is the term we use of, of costs that if the TIF um, process is successful um, that there's very explicit um, allocation of, of dollars uh, to, and um, you know the first thing that would actually be repaid are um, city costs related to this this transaction. Uh, there is uh, approximately a half a million dollars. There's a little bit of uncertainty there exactly because it depends on the ultimate cost of uh, certain things that are not complete yet, but around a half a million dollars initially flows to the city. Um, after that, uh, estimates right now, and then one of the things that will be happening during this escrow period, if, correct me if I don't get this quite right, Tim, but one of the things happening during this escrow period is these numbers are going to be refined. Um, the budget uh, will be solidified, but we would expect um, approximately, call it um, uh, six to seven million dollars um, uh, to be involved in the public improvements, which is the new streets as well as some improvements along Cherry Street and uh, and Bank Street. Uh, immediately around the, around the project. It's in that ballpark is my understanding. Um, you see, so you would need a TIF district that is bigger than that uh, before you start getting to um, additional public improvements. Okay, so it sounds like some of those additional improvements could still be done with, with the TIF. Um, That's right. And one thing that this agreement does is it, it, it 
it creates a mechanism for that um, despite the project delays that uh, really, uh, as, as I've discussed with you and I think others before, uh, a challenge we had to work through here is that the original development agreement had dates and deadlines in it that no longer could be met. Um, and uh, that's part of what needed to be worked out here is a updated agreement between us recognizing these new deadlines. It's a, in some ways, it took more work this time to ensure that the city would remain protected, uh, that taxpayers would remain protected from any kind of development or construction risk because of this, the schedule. This agreement has some additional uh, protection in there. It, it deals with the, those dates in some new ways, but yes, fundamentally, uh, if this project unfolds in a way that generates um, in that eight to $10 million range, as we're projecting right now, that will allow some of the additional public improvements to be built. And this development agreement creates the mechanism for that to work or for there to be even greater investments if the project is built more quickly or you know, anything else with respect uh, to the TIF district uh, is modified that creates um, in the future more, more capacity, which is something you know, that, that can't happen through legislative action. So uh, you know, we're giving you in that eight to $10 million projection uh, uh, our best uh, projection, given the information we have now, there are things that could improve or worsen that projection. Okay, and then I just have one other quick question. The the payments that the developer has agreed uh, to give the city due to time lost in construction, um, could you just repeat what that is? And, and is the, are those the years that have already gone by or would that happen only if construction continues to be delayed from here on out? Great, Courtney, this, this includes the delays backward looking and forward looking. Um, the, basically, the one financial impact on the city, direct financial impact on the city of the delays, um, and this is often misunderstood, it's often stated and believed, and it's just not accurate that there have somehow been massive financial consequences to the city because of the delays. There have not been. There is one area, as I've talked about publicly many times before, where the delays have impacted revenues to the city, and that is with respect to, to this detail. When the mall was taken down, um, the developers uh, made an agreement with the tax assessor um, that while the building was down, there would be a smaller property tax payment, $150,000 a year smaller, I believe off of a total tax bill of about $800,000. Um, the expectation when that agreement, agreement was made was that was a uh, lower payment for one year and one year only, because by the what was expected once deconstruction began in the fall of 2017 is that by the spring of 2019, there would be a foundation in the ground, there would be other construction in place, and that um, floor, if you will, of a property tax valuation would have started to build back up again through, through the process that any building process goes through. Every April 1st, we assess what is the value of the, the property, the improvements in the ground. And that was, uh, the plan was by uh, the spring of 2019 that that would start to rise. Well, history didn't unfold that way. The, the, pro the construction stopped and August of 2018 and it has stayed stopped. So um, already there was one problematic year, 20, the, the, the spring, basically we are, we are two years. Um, there was an expectation of one year of lower property tax payments. We have had one more already and we know that there will be a, a at least a second one. Um, if there is a third one, the developer will also be responsible for that. If somehow there is a fourth one and then the TIF district moved forward, the developer will be responsible for that. Uh, my expectation is that they will either be responsible for two years or three years. So that will be um, $300,000 or $450,000 of payments. All right. Thank you. That's all for me. Great. Great. Uh, the next question is from... Liam at VPR. Liam, let me locate you. All right, you should be able to enable your microphone. Great. Um, 
you know, the general tone of this press conference has been pretty optimistic, I'd say, to, to say the least. And, you know, while it seems like the city will have more assurances that the streets will be reconnected, what reassurances have you received from the developer that the project is actually going to go through um, to completion? I mean, the, it's been years now that, that nothing has really happened with that space. And it seems that, you know, getting the streets is, is one thing, but um, do you have any assurances that, that the developers who have not a great track record at this point will actually be able to, to do the project? Yeah, thanks, Liam. I think it's a fair question and one that I'm sure is on the minds of um, of many Burlingtonians. And I, I'm going to answer both pieces of that. I, I, I do want to, by both pieces, I mean, I want to speak to why we're focusing on, on the streets and, and then share what I can regarding the rest of the project. It, the, this, this project has always been a public private development where both the city and the developer were, were bringing something important to the table and there were both public goals and their uh, that the city had a lot of responsibility for delivering, and then there were there were private goals. Um, uh, the the public um, part of this project has always been the public infrastructure, and that is the part that the city can, you know, has real responsibility for, and can, and, and and really the reason this is a public private partnership, not a uh, just a straight um, uh, private effort like most of our housing and commercial projects are is because of that public infrastructure. Um, the two in the initial agreement were inextricably linked. The, um, in this settlement, there is in a real way, a, a delinking of, of, of those fates. We know now that the public improvements are going to get built through the guarantees that um, have been laid out and they, and they will be built um, at, at the outside. That, that construction would, would happen in, in 2023. And um, and that that is the, the that that is the the clearest um, outcome of this settlement. The in terms, you know, the city has never been able to uh, promise or guarantee because it is not our job and it is not in our control. Um, the uh, the private um, side of this partnership and. It is always, it has been our job and our goal to protect the city from any financial risk if there were delays or complications there, and that has worked under this development agreement. Um, uh, but it really isn't something that I, as mayor, can or really should uh, be able to um, uh, guarantee or, or, or protect. It is something that is outside of the city's control. I understand that the, the, develop, the developer will be speaking later today to, to where they are and and where um, they go from here. I, in terms of additional assurances that I think that make that give me some greater degree of confidence uh, that the timelines now will be met um, are this: it, the developer is now not the same entity that it was before. There now are these three respected local partners who have a history of. Uh, getting things done, getting things built in this community, including getting the, the new high school uh, and Macy's under construction. Um, and that is a positive uh, addition to, uh, to, to the development team. Um, in addition, I would say this, I, the, the, the last seven months have reinforced for me that there is a viable project uh, will be built on this site ultimately. The, there was enormous interest in this site from the moment that Brookfield pulled out last summer. Um, five different credible, well-resourced uh, development teams uh, have been in touch with the city in one way or another to make it clear that they are interested in playing a role if the current team falters. And um, I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, I, I hope and I, I, what I think the quickest and the uh, straightest path to getting the homes and the retail um, and the other jobs that we all want to see come out of this project um, is this current concept succeeding and this current development team succeeding. Um, but we all know that sometimes the market doesn't work that way. And, and if it and if it doesn't, uh, uh, there are, are definitely other well-resourced uh, 
partners that would that want to step in and that would uh, I, I believe step in, and um, that's the further significance of this announcement today about the public infrastructure is um, that the that infrastructure going in um, will play a key role in the private improvements um, being uh, ultimately successful and built in a way that really recreates a downtown neighborhood there. So in the, in the event that we hope to avoid where um, we have to enforce this binding contract to get the streets built, it will mean it will mean in all likelihood that this current effort has again faltered. Um, and the effort that comes after that will um, uh, face less challenges because not only is the, the suburban mall that takes million dollars to remove no longer there, but the public infrastructure that takes millions of dollars to put in place is, is there and will make future uh, success even more likely than than it is today. So, I hope that answers your question, Liam. Um, I'm just wondering: are you, are you confident in in the current development team's ability to to complete this project in the the timeline laid out in the new development agreement? Which obviously, I mean, I haven't read that yet, but I'm sure there are some dates in there. So, can can they make that? <laughs> so, Liam, we we have as part of this process. Uh, requested significant information about the, the new project. We have reviewed that. Jeffrey Glassberg, the city's uh, real estate professional who has been one of the point people on this project has reviewed it. And it, yes, we think it's a credible, um, feasible path forward. And uh, we we think it could succeed and we, we wish the developers well uh, and will be supportive of uh, of them going forward because their success is Burlington's success. Their success means more homes, more jobs, more revenues to the city, um, rec you know, and, and completion of the, of the public infrastructure. Um, uh, I think it should be reassuring to folks that we also have provisions in place if that does not succeed. So, so how confident are you in the project? I, you know, I can't put a number on it, Liam. I, I think it's, again, you know, the, we, I, there, there's the, the developer um, is going to share, make a, a, a further statement today. They are the ones that are really in best position to speak to all the feasibility questions that you're raising. Thank you. The next question is from Grace from VT Digger. Grace, you should be able to enable your microphone. Okay, great. Um, I just have a question. Obviously, we haven't seen the new proposed development agreement yet, but we, we know that the inability to secure financing um, has been a major downfall for this project to move forward. There were assurances from the beginning that finances was secured and contracts supposedly met to break ground with the, in, with the initial development agreement. Um, but of course, that never materialized. So I'm wondering how this new development agreement assures that financing will be secured this time around. And if there are extra protections that weren't in the last agreement to ensure that financing comes through. So I, I'm gonna push back a little bit, Grace, on, on, the, on the premise of, of your, your question. Um, the, the, the development agreement was explicit that the, all of the financing for the project had not been secured at the time it was executed and at the time that the developer was was given the go ahead to take down the building, um, and um, that was uh, a very transparent part of the original agreement. And we had provisions in place um, that uh, were designed to um, uh, protect the city in the event that the, the developers uh, failed to perform. And that's exactly what has happened here. That's exactly what we're announcing today because they did not make good um, on, on that agreement. Um, we uh, now, after pursuing legal action, um, are announcing a settlement with millions of dollars of value 
uh, for for taxpayers that are um, that flow from that. Um, so in terms of uh, going forward from here again, and I, the developer um, is the party that's best able to speak to where they stand in the financing process and and why they um, have optimism that they're going to succeed at this. Uh, this development team has recently um, purchased, basically bought out the interest of, of Brookfield. They put, they, they did so, obviously that suggests some confidence on their part that they're going to be able to ultimately succeed at, at, at seeing a project built here. Um, what this, what this, the, the additional protections here are um, contemplate if they continue to falter, if they continue to have trouble, making sure that the city's interest, the city's uh, public infrastructure gets built regardless. And Mayor, can I add something there I think might be helpful? The, the, the financing contingencies, if you will, associated with the existing development agreement, the old development agreement uh, with completion guarantees and, and performance bonds and those sorts of things were associated with the contracts that would begin um, the phase of construction that they're that they're faced with now, right? The, the demolition is already done. So before, so the shorter answer may be that before they start construction again, the commitment from the prior agreement to have a contract with a, a guaranteed maximum price and performance guarantees and all of those things in place does sit in the new amended and restated agreement. It, th those things will have to be in place before the TIF happens, you know, before you know, before all of those steps can can take place. So, um, we believe yes that the commitments for you know the the going forward construction uh, that were uh, anticipated, you know, with the last agreement are still very much in place. And you know, the difference between the last agreement and this one is that you know at this point the, the old buildings are already gone. That helps clarify. Thank you. Um, I I do just I want to make sure I'm understanding correctly that those contracts that were provided to the city last time around from Ralph's properties, um, they were provided, but still financing never came. So I'm curious if this time around that if there are additional guardrails to ensure that financing does come, or was it just the the fact that the financier was a bad actor and and didn't produce what they say were they they were going to produce. So I, I, I didn't live through the last iteration, but I think you might be confusing some of the commitments with the various uh, respective stages that were going on, right? The commitment from Rouse was an equity commitment. Um, it was tied to other things as well, right? But I, it, the idea was that they were demonstrating their wherewithal to be in the project uh, at the time of demolition. And, and, but it was very clearly understood that the debt financing for construction was going to occur between the demolition phase and the, and the next phase of, of reconstruction. Um, and so, uh, you know, that, that is the point at which the project stopped. That is the point at which, you know, they would be picking back up. And so the commitments to getting the, the contracts I was referencing before in, in response to your question aren't commitments from an equity source, uh, but, but they're the, 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 the construction contracts, right? In place with the builder, um, with there, there will be a construction loan attached to that. And that lender is going to be expecting uh, completion guarantees and performance bonds and all of those sorts of things that the city can take assurances from that you know, the project would get completed. But, but those were delivered, correct? No, they weren't, Grace. The, the, here's the issue. There's a two phase, what was the, the, the past agreement had two phases to it, essentially. There was the demolition phase, and then there was the construction phase. And in the demolition phase, what, they, what we required them to submit before starting the demolition phase were the contracts related to demolition, which they did provide to us and which they did complete. The, there was another milestone um, that they needed to provide additional documentation before they started the construction side. At the, at the construction phase, many additional requirements were going to be put on them. Uh, they never got to that. In fact, the reason, since it, not only did they not get to that, I mean, it gets into the weeds here, but the re, if you recall, they needed to come back to us and they asked for a further, uh, further a third stage essentially to be added in and then the, 
and we, the city approved it at one point, which was to have just a foundation stage of the project. And uh, you know, we, we granted them that, but they didn't even go forward with that stage. So what I believe what Tim is saying is that all of those provisions still remain in place that they never got to last time, which is if they are gonna get to the point to commence construction, at which point the city has a real dog in the fight because the city um, needs, you know, the, them starting construction and is related to when the city will start to uh, take on debt for the tax increment financing. Um, all of those protections and more, frankly, are now here in this development, restated and amended development agreement um, to ensure that if, if and when they get to that milestone, the city is fully protected. So this, we now, and Tim referenced this in the opening, we, we actually have additional provisions now because, uh, again, we're getting deep, it's, it's deep in the weeds here, but because of TIF deadlines, we will be incurring debt um, if that project is going forward uh, before all the private improvements are built. To make sure that there is no risk to taxpayers, we need additional provisions in place requiring the developer in a secure way to cover the costs of the city's borrowing um, uh, until the private improvements are in place. So there's a whole section, there's a whole a bunch of language around that as an additional protection now. Um, there are additional steps leading up to the city taking on the TIF, TIF debt where we, there are formal milestones where the developers need to, to perform um, in order for us to take steps even leading up to the, the commitment of debt. So um, all of that is there. In fact, it's expanded um, where I feel like we're having some tension in the line of questioning here is it wasn't the fact that they got to that point and then failed to deliver. They never got to that point. Okay, that helps clarify. Thank you. Great, and that is all the questions that we have for today. Oh, no, I'm Great. sorry. Uh, <laughs> One more just came in. Um, oh, you know what? I will reply to that one offline. We are all set. All right. Well, let let me um, let me just close by saying uh, I um, um, as I just, I, just uh, I um, am sympathetic uh, to members of the media who, first of all. These documents are about to be posted and uh, and we're happy to follow up on further questions when, when the documents are posted. Um, secondly, um, uh, you know, I, I guess that's just really the point I wanted to make. This, there's, this is, there's a lot of complication here and events are moving quickly here and the mayor's office as well as uh, other members of our team are I'm uh, happy to provide additional information outside of this event if, if that's helpful uh, with, the, with the reporting on this. And I've made the same uh, offer to all city councilors uh, that um, to put uh, personal time and the time of our team that's been working on this into helping the council fully understand uh, where we stand in this between now and when the vote will be on February 16th. Thank you everyone for, for uh, tuning in this afternoon. I know we've had a very large uh, group on um, and we appreciate uh, you being with us. And um, thank you to uh, everyone on, on the call with me. Thank you for your, uh, helping to communicate this important announcement to the public. And uh, I know there'll be more communications about this very soon. Take care everyone.